one. You will hear a telephone conversation between a customer and an overseas shipping agent. First, you have some time to look at questions one to eight. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to eight. Good afternoon, Denham Shipping. How can I be of service? Well, I wish to inquire about sending a container of personal items from the UK to Ireland. No problem. Would you like me to give you an estimate of the cost? Yes, please. Well, first of all, may I take your details? Of course. My name's Tim Lafferty. Could you spell your surname for me, please, Tim? Yes, it's Lafferty. L A F F E R T Y. Thank you, Tim. Now, where would you like us to pick your container up from? My university, if possible. Okay. Let me make a note of the address. It's Abbeyfield University. Is that A B B E Y F I E L D? That's right. Park Street, Brighton. Perfect. And may I take down your postcode too? It's B R eight nine P three. Great. Thank you, Tim. Have you the container's measurements? I do. It's approximately two point five meters long by one point two five meters wide. I see. Quite a big one, then. Indeed. And the height? I make it a meter and twenty centimeters deep. So that's two point five by one point two five by one point two. Right. And what will actually be in the box, Tim? Oh, mostly old uni books. Okay. And some music albums. Anything else? Yes, a little bit of stationery. I see. And could you put an estimate on the value of the items? The books are quite valuable. They're worth around one thousand eight hundred pounds. The music albums, maybe half that, say nine hundred pounds, and you can put the stationery down as three hundred pounds. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions nine and ten. Now listen and answer questions nine and ten. Okay. And will you be purchasing contents cover from us also? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Sorry. Let me explain. Because your items are worth more than two thousand pounds, we recommend that you purchase insurance to cover yourself in the event of damage or loss. Makes sense. What are my options? Well, we offer three insurance deals: the premium rate, standard rate, and economy rate ones. Premium offers full cover in the event of loss, damage, or theft, which means you would be provided with the full cost of replacing your belongings. What about standard and economy? Standard will give you today's value. 
the second-hand value of your belongings, and economy provides you with a fixed payment of £1,000 in the event of loss, damage or theft. Well, I can afford to live without those books, to be honest. So just give me the cheapest option. We recommend standard cover for all our customers. No, thank you. That won't be necessary. The cheapest option will be fine. No problem. And one last thing. Will you be needing delivery at your office, at your house, or do you intend to pick up your container at the port? Home delivery would suit me best, I think. We'll get that process for you. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a talk given by Madeline. She is going to introduce the recreational facilities on campus and in town. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Madeline Stewart, and I'm here to tell you about the recreational facilities available on campus, and also to tell you something about what the town has to offer. You may already know that your students' union membership also includes membership of the sports union, which provides a range of sporting and recreational facilities on campus much the same as those in most British universities. The sports union has football, tennis, and cricket teams in local competitions. And really, most sports are catered for in some way on campus, even if they're just social matches. In the building itself, there are fitness classes and a full gym, including weights. The sports union can also provide cheap tickets to some major sporting events. And to keep you up to date with everything available, there's a weekly newsletter distributed around the campus. You should check this to find out the names and phone numbers of the contact people for each sport or activity you're interested in. Er, yes, did you have a question? Yes, uh, apart from what you've just said, does the sports union offer individual help in any of its activities, uh, for example, in getting fit and healthy? Yes, we do. The sports union has a fitness assessment clinic every Friday, staffed by the resident sports trainer, who can provide advice on the best program for you and refer you to various charts. I'm sure you all realize that for any medical assessment or health problem, you should go to the university medical service. The sports trainer can also advise you on a suitable training program using the weights. And now on to Ashbury. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now, 
Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. And now on to Ashbury. For a town of its size, Ashbury has some unusually good leisure and sporting facilities, most of which are near the center of town and easily reached by bus from this campus. There's a new, well, almost new, Olympic-sized swimming pool. That's not quite in the central town area, but it's only a five-minute walk from the bus stop. Above the pool, there's a high-tech fitness center that any of you more serious fitness lovers would need to check out. Then, in the center of town, there's a sporting complex called the Anderson Center, which contains squash courts and facilities for a number of other indoor sports, such as basketball. And just around the corner from the Anderson Center, in the main street there, is an indoor bowling alley. All of these facilities are listed in the weekly newsletter, so I encourage you all to look through it and... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear a conversation between Astrid and Henry about the lecture they've just heard. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Henry, don't you think Dr Adams' lecture was really very good? He could talk about the telephone directory and make it interesting. All his lectures are like that, Astrid. He's just one of those people. I wish we had him as our tutor. I bet you that he is very demanding, though. Boris is in his tutorial group and agrees that he is brilliant. But he puts them under a lot of pressure. Hmm. But don't you think that's good? Perhaps. Anyway, he's interesting and rather funny. Did you take lots of notes in the lecture? Yes, actually I did. In fact, several pages. I didn't think I had taken so many. I was that busy listening to what was being said that I didn't take many notes. Can I photocopy yours? I don't think that's such a good idea. You won't be able to read my handwriting. And sometimes I write them in English and sometimes in Arabic. Oh, let's have a look. Wow, your notes are so neat. Well, there's not much in Arabic. There is on this page. <laughs> yes, there is. Dr. Adams would be pleased to see this, especially given what he's talking about. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Don't you keep careful notes? Mm, sometimes. It depends on the lecture. I don't think I'll forget Adams's lecture today, but some of the details will fade. I type up everything afterwards, so you can have a copy then, and you can fill in anything I've missed. I'm not so good on the broader concepts. I'm better when it comes to detail. Just what Adams was talking about. Well, I am definitely a detailed person. I need to have everything written down before I can get the concepts clear in my head. And I am the complete opposite. I find all the detail clutters up my mind, and I get very frustrated, which was just what he was on about. 
He mentioned a book he had written. He mentioned several. The one on space and the individual. Yes, called My Space. It's on the book list. Hmm, so it is. I think I'll get that out of the library or get my own copy. Did you get what he said about spatial awareness? I didn't really. Yes, it was fascinating. I can't be as eloquent as Adams was, but I know several people who are frighteningly intelligent, but they have difficulty reading simple directions, even when getting to places that they know very well. I find that difficult to understand. Everyone learns the way to walk to the shops and things like that. You mean just the way people learn spelling? You know, people misspell words, make mistakes in countless areas of their lives, and going in the right direction is just the same. Remember what Adam said about the number of people who cannot tell left from right, north from south, and so on. Do you know which way is north? Um, it's that way. <laughs> you see, I couldn't have told you that. Really? I haven't a clue which way is which. That's why I'm always getting lost when I go out on my bike, and put me in a completely new place, and I am totally lost. What about maps? Oh, I'm hopeless at reading them. But then you're brilliant at writing essays and getting all the ideas down in the right order, and I don't know where to start. Again, just what Adams was talking about. What we need to do is combine our skills. You teach me to cope with detail, and I'll teach you how to string concepts together. Okay, we can do that. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear a program on the city of Brisbane. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Today in our Around the World programme, Mr White is going to recommend a charming city to you, Brisbane. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever been to Brisbane? Well, if you are looking for a mild climate, a relaxed atmosphere and a lot of culture, Brisbane might be the place for you. Its sunny cafes and offshore islands attract surfers and sun lovers, but it is also the arts capital of Queensland, with many museums and art galleries. This thriving artistic setting mixes well with Brisbane's beach town atmosphere. Together these two qualities make Brisbane a very desirable place to live. No wonder since 1980 over a half a million Australians have moved here. Brisbane is now Australia's third largest city. English settlers living in Australia established Brisbane in 1842. At that time, more than a 100,000 Aboriginal Australians were living in Queensland. As the settlers discovered Queensland's resources, more and more of them moved in. Regretfully, the settlers drove the Aboriginal Australians from their lands. By 1859, Brisbane had grown into a prosperous city. In 1988, the world watched as Brisbane hosted the World Expo. This international fair showcased new technology, but it also showed off the city of Brisbane to the world. Brisbane also hosts a wide range of events year-round. In April, everyone can enjoy a few laughs at the Comedy Festival, and movie lovers will enjoy a film festival that takes place every August. 
for two weeks in september there is an outdoor festival of the arts in october a music festival draws a large crowd and in january you can see brisbane's most bizarre event you may be surprised to hear that the annual cockroach races that's right people really do train and race cockroaches brisbane's nice climate and compact design makes it easy to explore on foot follow the golden arrows in the footpath around the city centre this will lead you on a tour of brisbane's historical district from the city centre take a boat across the brisbane river to south bank this area is popular for its bike paths beach and weekend market hundreds of artists display their wares at this market it's a great place to pick up some interesting handicrafts well i think what you must be interested in is the unique native animals yes you shouldn't visit australia without seeing its trademark animals the koala and kangaroo the lone pine koala sanctuary has both it is located just outside the city centre in beautiful parkland you can hold one of the park's one hundred and thirty koalas or feed the kangaroos another quiet refuge from the city is mount kuta about eight kilometres from brisbane on a clear day it offers spectacular views of the city it also has hiking trails and beautiful gardens along the brisbane river a sunset cruise is also very relaxing the areas around brisbane are impressive a coastal drive south of brisbane will take you along the gold coast this famous coastline boasts some of australia's best beaches stradbroke island is another easy day trip from brisbane a cliff on the island called point lookout offers a great view from there you can see dolphins swimming below brisbane forest park to the north of brisbane is a great place for hiking and camping these great getaways along with brisbane's own laid-back charm make this city an ideal place to visit That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.